Good morning, happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Old Westbury Seventh Day Adventist Church. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Uh, let's, special welcome to those who, of you in online. Let's take a moment to greet one another. Turn around to your left, behind you. Let us give each other an Adventist greeting. Let's put some energy into that. Happy Sabbath. There you, there you go. Oh, you do so well. Uh, here's the announcement. Let's start with, please remember tonight to set your clock back because we go into, we spring backwards tonight, so you get an extra hour sleep tomorrow. So at 2 o'clock this morning, if you're still wandering around your home and you haven't slept, just walk over to the clock and set it back an hour. Uh, here are your announcement for today. Announcement must be turned in by Wednesday by noon if you want to make the cutoff. This week prayer meeting is Tuesday on Zoom at 8 p.m. And I was asked to give a special acknowledgement the Wednesday night prayer meeting at 730. Please, we're having a little low turnout. We ask if more people can join in on Wednesday night for, at 730 for the prayer meeting. So can we get a little more participation, please? Uh, Every Sabbath, third Sabbath of the month, uh, AY at 430, Children's Church will be the first Sabbath of the month, okay? Bible questions and answer presentation will be for Monday, the 7th. And today the pastor is not here, but please don't panic. We have a guest speaker. He has come, <laughs> Dr. Anderson has come all the way from a cardiac surgeon who has traveled all the way from Virginia to to the, ser the service today, so when he comes up, let's give him a nice, warm uh, Old Westbury greeting. The food pantry is open the first Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m., and the third Thursday from 6 to 8. Please follow us, subscribe to us on Facebook, join us, okay, online for, for, this, for the things that we got going on on, on our website. So that concludes our announcement for today. The Sabbath, please stand for the call to worship. for prayer. Almighty Father in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come boldly before your throne of grace because you have invited us to do so through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. We ask for more of your Holy Spirit. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be in each one of our hearts today. We ask that you will speak to us as only you can speak to us. Humble our hearts, empty our souls of all self. Lead us to the cross of Jesus Christ. And may we leave changed through the power of your love. In Jesus' holy name we pray and ask you. Amen.
Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. We do not give to the Lord for him to bless us. Rather, we give to him because he has already blessed us. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. It is he who gives us power to get wealth. Should he revoke that power, we would not have the innate ability to achieve anything that is worthwhile. David, in 1 Corinthians 29 and verse 14, wrote, But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Everything we have and are belongs to the Lord. Let us therefore willingly return to him his goods. In the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 527, the servant of the Lord writes, the contributions required of the Hebrews for religious and charitable purposes amounted to fully one-fourth of their income. So heavy a tax on the resources of the people might be expected to reduce them to poverty. But on the contrary, the faithful observance of these regulations was one of the conditions of their prosperity. End of quote. As he did in the days of Israel, God is calling us to faithfulness. He has always been faithful to his people. Let us reciprocate that faithfulness in how we respond in returning our tithe and our offerings to the Lord. Today's special offering is for the local church budget. Let us pray. Loving Father, you have been gracious to us. You have been generous to us. Help us that as we return to you, that which really belongs to you, we might do it with willing hearts. Help us that we might not be grudgeful. Help us that we might not be covetous. Help us to realize that all things come of you and we are only returning that which belongs to you. Bless these tithe and offering as they are returned to the treasury, we pray in Jesus' name. I will invite you to turn your Bibles or your gadgets to Acts chapter 1. That's Acts chapter 1, and we are going to read verse 8. And I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, church family. It's a blessing to be here at the church and also those who are joining us in online. Sister Void, she mentioned in one of her books, Jesus called us to walk with him in the path of humble, truthful, and obedience. He is our loud and best friend. He is our best counselor. As we are approaching throne of God's grace, pray for one another. Pray for our church. 
pray for our nation because all the turmoil going around the world we have to pray are there any special prayer requests please raise your right hand and let us all kneel if you can and sing our prayer song Lord you are our great god great king above all you are our maker you are our shepherd you are our redeemer we thank you for your goodness and mercy father we thank you for the sabbath and our families we thank you for your love and watching over us with care is measureless Father we are privileged and blessed to be here together and also those who are joining us on online to come and worship you and adore you Father Isaiah 65 24 says before they will call i will answer while they are still speaking i will hear Father we are calling upon you please answer our prayers please forgive our sins and have mercy upon us loving father help us we can start the every day start daily with your word and to strengthen us our personal walk with you lord help us to shut treasure your word in our heart and to reveal your love to others father lord you have called us you have scattered us throughout the community let us stand for your truth and to brighten our life let other people look at us they can also come to you and get a blessing father we have a trials hard to bear temptation difficult to resist give us the strength lord help us to go through it without doubt father you called us to enjoy the truth help us father with our substance to spread your word and help us we can anxiously waiting for your second coming father help us to be a light for others loving lord we pray for our visitors and their families we pray for our church family we pray for sick and suffering father you are the great healer heal them father father we have each and every one they raise their hand special prayer request you know their request lord please grant that request according to your will father we pray for our elderly please be with them provide them whatever need they in they are looking give them good health and strength father we pray for our youth lord some of them they are here some of them 
drifted away. Father, none of us perfect. Please, wherever they are, please bring them back to your fold. Father, help them to grow in you. We pray for our church children and our school children, Lord. Please give them good health and spirit. Help them in their studies. Bring them closer to you. Father, we pray for missionaries around the world. There's a lot of medical missionaries. They are spending their time and healing people, Father. That is the same thing you did while, we were, while, while you were in the earth, Lord. Please help them, strengthen them. Help us, guide us. We can also spend time to do your missionary around here and also other part of the world. Father, we pray for our speaker, Dr. Anderson. Please be with him. Bless him in a special way and to speak through him, Lord. Father, we pray for our church. We pray for our conference. We pray for our nation, Lord. All the world, the, throughout the world, a lot of turmoils, so many things are going around. Father, please take care of it. And we believe, Father, you defeated Satan, but we trust in you and hold on to you until your second coming, Father. Father, we thank you for listening to our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Now I'm supposed to speak. <laughs> I should have uh, sent word that's the one song you're not supposed to sing before I preach. Because <laughs> now I've been weeping. What amazing love Jesus has shown for humanity. to give up so much, to give us the opportunity to be set free of the chains of sin, to be set free of the slavery to sin. That is a big, big deal. But it comes at such a high price because Jesus had to sacrifice so much. And I submit I can only speak about one life, mine. I'm all too familiar with the frailties and the imperfections of my life. It was only at complete submission to him, that I was not able to do. I knew what was right and wrong. I was born and raised in a Seventh-day Adventist family. I'm not going to discuss my life, but I'm just going to give you an example. I knew what was right and wrong, but I was completely powerless to obey. I was still a slave to sin, regardless of what I knew, regardless of my upbringing. So what happened between then and now? We, we, we don't like to hear about the cross. We, we, we don't like to hear about lead me to the cross of Calvary. That's not exactly what a carnal mind wants to hear. But that's the only way to transition from cultural, mediocre, powerless Christianity to a consecrated totally surrendered soul and it is a knock down drag out exhausting process because surrendering, I, 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 it's marvelous, don't misunderstand me, but surrendering to the will of Jesus, surrendering to the will of God, requires the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it's not going to happen. And so I don't feel equipped to speak with you in depth about the Holy Spirit, but that's what we're going to discuss today. Now, the carnal mind, 
in the spiritual mind, they are at war with each other. They cannot coexist. It's one or the other that's in control. The word relinquish became my favorite English word far before I was able to do it. I knew that's what I had to do. But it was only the Holy Spirit patiently, persistently working within my heart, showing me there's nothing here. There's nothing here worth striving for. There's nothing here worth having in comparison to the marvelous, magnificent, indestructible, powerful life of a humble, meek, and contrite spirit Christian person. Because it is in that person where God tells Paul, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Such a, oh, a carnal mind doesn't want that. Weakness, humility, meekness. Oh, you'll see it occasionally and it's okay, but you know, not too much. Not too much of that. I'm, I'm into the, I'm into the me. There's no future in that. There's something, and we're, we don't want to analyze it. We don't want to analyze evil. But there's something about it that's not logical. But that's what it is. I want to share with you the current state of the human being that has not had the chains of sin broken through the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within your heart. I want to share with you what happens in all of us before we get to the point where we say, as in this precious song for prayer, you're the potter, I'm the clay. If I ask for I'm not going to. If I ask for people to stand up who really love those words, I don't think I'm going to have too many people standing up, but I sure will, because there's nothing here worth having apart from Jesus Christ. Nothing. And I'm no Solomon, but he's telling us all. He did it all, and he says... It's all a chasing after the wind. It takes the Holy Spirit, the mercy of God, the blood of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to give Solomon that insight at the senior point of his life. We, we, we don't want to wait to the senior point of our life. We want a spiritual life now. So the state of our mind in the carnal setting is called envy and jealousy. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's not me. That, that's not me. I, I just haven't quite overcome the sins in my life that are habitual. The family and the curses that I'm dragging around because I've delayed submitting. But envy and jealousy? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think so. That's not me. Let it, this is uh, from our high calling. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians 5.26. Envy and jealousy are diseases which disorder all the functions of the being. They originated with Satan. 
Oh, that such would change, become changed by beholding Christ, or that they would be meek and lowly by learning of him. Carnal life, envy and jealousy, can't get enough, grasping for more. I'm not the only one that lived that life, attending church on Sabbath. Every one of you have lived that life. How many have transitioned into what Christ calls the spiritual life? That is what the ultimate human existence is, even here on earth. Yes, beam me up, Scotty. Yep, yeah, we want to go to heaven. Take us out of this evil experience. It's getting worse. It's getting hotter. What about all the others that are not saved? Oh, forget it. That's the carnal mind. Just showing you a thermometer. To be in heaven. To be given that undeserved privilege to be in heaven one day and to think of somebody who I didn't invite, didn't challenge to surrender. The carnal mind says, just try harder, just try harder, just try harder. The spiritual mind Surrender, surrender, surrender. Relinquish to God, relinquish to God, relinquish to God. What'll it be for you and me? God tells us, I know how to give good gifts. If you ask me, I will give you the Holy Spirit. It's just asking and then patiently waiting. It was very interesting. Nicodemus, he said, okay, uh, th th this Jesus, he's, he's kind of interesting. He, he's been working miracles. I'm one of the leaders here. But he has something that I don't have. I want to I talk with him. But not in public. I, I don't want anyone else to know. So he asks to speak with Jesus. And of course, immediately insults Jesus. Well, we know that you're a teacher and that you're, you're linked with God. He didn't want to acknowledge him as the Messiah. Jesus, he knows who he is. He's human. He's on a horrific mission, but he's on a mission of love. And he's trying to spread the good news of the kingdom of heaven. But of course, he's been saying things, he's been dropping some bombs that, truth bombs that really offend the Pharisees, the self righteous. Know anybody here this morning that fits that group? The self righteous? Avoid them like the plague. Ellen White says, we are utterly unworthy of salvation. Utterly unworthy of salvation. Our righteousness is filthy rags, Jesus says. So what's going to save me? With the carnal mind, nothing. Nothing is going to save the carnal mind. Even David in the Old Testament said, Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. He knew through his relationship with Jesus, 
with the God of heaven, the future Messiah. The Holy Spirit had been given to David. And despite that, of course, we know the sins that unfolded. So having the Holy Spirit surrendering to Jesus doesn't make us immune from sin. But the astonishing thing, I'm not sure I can even grasp this, is having the Holy Spirit in his heart, being one with the Father, in his spiritual walk with God, David was a spiritual man. It took, Nath it took Nathan to come and give that infamous story that came from below and caught David by surprise. And the analogy proved to David that he was guilty of egregious sin and confessed. And then the Lord just forgave him. I mean, I submit to you, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, the contrite heart, the meek and humble spirit that David had, that God the Father understood that David was truly sorry. But the essential work of the Holy Spirit in his heart, he was not like King Saul, hard-hearted, stubborn, full of envy and jealousy. That was not David. So it's an interesting study as an example of the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We're still human. We're still at risk of sin. But we're one with the Father. We are then considered children of God. The carnal mind, uh, okay, I understand intellectually, there is no power over sin in the carnal mind. Now, Jesus conquered sin on the cross, and his blood covers my sin. But God still calls us to an orderly life of submission to him. Do I feel like a prisoner? No, I feel like a slave set free, a slave to sin in my carnal past, now in a spiritual walk with Jesus, facilitated through the Holy Spirit. I'll read for you Matthew, and, and we're in the Lord's house, so we're not going to talk about controversy today. The self-righteous, avoid them like the plague. Those who want to condemn the Trinity theology of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, avoid them like the plague. I'm not here to take sides. Uh, Ellen White says, uh, the Spirit of Prophecy says, the Lord gives us enough information for us to not have doubt. We don't have to have every one of our questions answered. To those who like to dig deeper and deeper, uh, th that's okay, but if you're digging deeper to find reason for doubt, there's going to be room for you to have doubt because God doesn't remove that option. But the Word of God speaks very clearly. Matthew 28, the last chapter of Matthew. And Jesus has already been crucified, resurrected, and been with the disciples for 40 days. Time to go to heaven permanently. Well, not permanently until he comes to retrieve us. And so he's telling the disciples, let's, let's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to paraphrase it, let's, Let's read it, because that's much better. So let's go to Matthew 28.
And at the very end of the chapter, verse 19, Dear Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us as we read your Holy Word. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Isn't that cool? It's a beautiful world. Even the mess that it's in. It's still God's world. And I'm not talking about just the, uh, the mountains and the valleys and the, and the oceans. I'm talking about the people. Can you imagine standing on the sea of glass? Can you imagine the majesty, the majesty of standing there with people of all nations? Isn't that beautiful? That, that is just fantastic. So, Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, uh-oh, and the Holy Spirit. Three members of the Godhead. Trinity, whatever, let's not get caught up in these different words. Catholic, not Catholic. I mean, it's a total waste of time. And I have seen beyond the words of those who condemn our church leaders. Adventists. Who want to talk about worshiping God, the only God. Now, I don't pray to the Holy Spirit. I ask for the Holy Spirit. I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there, there's a million other things that we could speculate about, but we've not been told about it. Ask for the Holy Spirit. You will receive power. Go to the ends of the earth, making disciples of all people, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Those are very clear instructions. Do I need to sit on my couch and speculate about all the other things that I haven't been told about? We've been warned against that. And then Jesus closes by saying, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Very positive statements, very strong assurances. Now, the disciples were also instructed by Jesus, stay together and pray and wait. And so then we go to Acts, our text for today, chapter 1. And in chapter 1, Jesus instructs the disciples. Jesus is talking. These are Jesus' words in quotation. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. The Holy Spirit was a gift. It was not just kind of optional. Don't do anything until you receive the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus' instructions to the disciples. They stayed in the upper room. They were of one accord and prayed earnestly. And we know what happened on the day of Pentecost. Now come to today. We're in the midst of a self-righteous <laughs> denomination. I love this church. I love this church. I don't mean just the old Westbury Church. I do love the old Westbury Church. I love the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Not because of the self-righteousness of our ancestors or those that are among us. The wheat and tares will grow together. I love this church because it is the apple of God's eye. And there is an amazing purpose that he has for each one of you 
to reach those in your circle of influence. And that's a very positive command. And don't do a thing without the Holy Spirit. Don't do any witnessing with a carnal attitude. <laughs> It'll fall flat. It'll fall flat. But ask for the Holy Spirit. There's going to be an amazing outpouring of the Holy Spirit, perhaps in some of our lifetimes. Not sure how long I'll be alive, but I know many of you who love the Lord, who love Jesus, who understand that it's the blood of Jesus only that covers your sins, who understands that it's only the Holy Spirit that's going to equip you that any of your words that are shared will have any meaning in the lives of others. It's only the Holy Spirit that will make us victors, submissive to God, respectful of our leaders and of our elders as above us. It's only the Holy Spirit that will cause us to diminish. As John the Baptist said of Jesus, he must increase, I must decrease. Many of us human beings need to take that attitude. We can't fulfill the gospel commission of Matthew 28 by being individual leaders. We need to submit to one another, consider one another better than us and find ways of helping others witness to be more effective, as well as ours. Only the Holy Spirit will help us to have that humble, meek, and contrite spirit, and to truly embrace the cross of loving self-sacrifice. Loving self-sacrifice, kindness, serious humility. The time for striving for position it's never been a time for that quite frankly but that time's over. The time's over. The time for desiring to win an argument about anything theological, that belongs in the carnal, self-righteous mind. It doesn't belong in the spiritual mind. No hard-hearted, carnal person wants to hear a religious expository conversation from a carnal-minded person. They're not interested. The humble and contrite spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, can cut through that jealous, envious heart who's truly looking for something. The carnal mind is looking. They're searching. They're searching for something better. A lot of alpha males in this group. A lot. I submit they're all here. It's so much better <laughs> to be a crucified alpha male and realize I'm nothing without the Holy Spirit. I can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. I can accomplish nothing without the Holy Spirit. My influence is zero without the Holy Spirit. And I must decrease and Jesus must increase in my life. That is the ultimate life. That is the ultimate goal. From my seventh grade, 
I want to be a thoracic surgeon. Oh my, oh, parents proud. Oh, isn't that great? It's garbage. It's complete garbage without the Holy Spirit and without, without a humble, meek, and contrite spirit. You think the Lord wants us to be, do you think the Lord wants to sweep the floor with our bodies? No. Doesn't he want our light to shine? But not the carnal light. This is trash. We, we see arrogant, boastful, proud, we, 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 they're around, all around us. Sooner or later, they're going to get offended and lash out. If that's where I am, I can't witness for the Lord. Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. The Father knows how to give you good gifts, but it's not going to be unless you ask. And you may have to keep asking and keep kneeling and keep submitting and keep asking for the power to submit. And it may take a while, but if you stay steady with Jesus, if you stay steady to the best of your ability in following his lead, he will give you the Holy Spirit. No question about it. He will give you the Holy Spirit. But you must ask with an earnest heart, I'll leave a few words with you in closing. So with the followers of Christ, we can receive of heaven's light only as we are willing to be emptied of self. No one over in this group is going to do that. There's no alpha male or alpha female or whatever word we want to use. There's no carnal mind that's going to be emptied of self. It's only through a spiritual walk with God. We cannot discern the character of God or accept Christ by faith unless we consent to the bringing into captivity of every thought to the obedience of Christ. Not behavior, not action, not word, but every thought. To all who do this, the Holy Spirit is given without measure. Now, I had to separate these three sentences because I thought all three were really important. Desire of Ages, 179 to 181. Submit. Captivate your thoughts. Empty yourself through the power of God. He will give you the Holy Spirit without measure. Now, I don't know about you. Working harder in my job just to accomplish things or this? Ponder it. It's important to work hard in your job, to do your best with the Holy Spirit is heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. We live in a challenging time. Election day is right around the corner. We live in an awesome country. It is in deep wounds, crippled, but it's still an awesome country. Every one of us in this room have different political attitudes. We need each other. 
The eagle cannot fly without the left wing and the right wing. Never saw a picture of an eagle flying with one wing. Pray that our elections, that there will not be an imbalance. Now that's praying too low, because really the, the greatest request, obviously, ask for the Holy Spirit. During all of the Trump hoopla, I wasn't praying for, Lord, help this or that to happen. I kept saying, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit into these people's lives. And pour out your Holy Spirit into my life. This is the United States of America. The first word is united. Now, the early Christian church, even the disciples couldn't all necessarily get along, Paul and Barnabas, and we know all of that. So some are left, some are right. I fear the extremes. So just pray that the extremes don't supersede and look for a way to not hate your brother who doesn't see things the way you do. The only thing you can control is yourself. Holy Spirit, change my heart, make it ever true, may I be like you. There are a lot of issues Jesus didn't get caught up in. Ask for wisdom from the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. closing him.
Thank you, Dr. Anderson, for your time and the message about the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 says, Jesus himself, he was asking his father, he will send another advocate and he will help us and he will be with us forever until Jesus come, that is the Holy Spirit. But the only question is, we have to ask. Like the doctor said, we have to ask and the Holy Spirit will guide our life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message, songs, praises, special music. Father, as we are departing from this place, let your spirit be with us. As we are going outside the world, let your love shine in us and reflect others to bring closer to you. Help us, Lord. Guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.